but but still. to see how the draft goes. Because today, SKT, it's worth noting, have been almost exclusively these poke compositions. Always like it when Sword Art comes online, and we've seen it plenty of times this tournament. But Flash Wars first ban will be Karma coming out there. And as the Alice to you talking about Poe Velter taking off the table in this matchup. No engage. Zyra banned by Flash was okay. So they saw Wolf running this today. Of course, it was famously called JJ yesterday mm -hmm. that brought the pick out after it was banned by TSM in their first game of the day. So. Cyrus support among the Korean team seems to be the hot new thing. Breaking the trends with the support ban out, and Nidalee will come in as a Kasa ban out, and also Bangi as well, taking that away from his champion pool. No mid bans just yet. I guess the flex of Karma. There's the uh, there's the mid ban of Rise, aimed at Faker, and we'll see what SKT does to close out the banning phase. Now the big story I'm seeing here, Bobelta, is that both Aurelian Sol and Syndra have made it through to the final ban. They ban away Syndra. Is it first pick Aurelian Sol? Do you feel like? that can be powerful, or is it not worth reaching for, given other lane matchups available for that Aurelian Soul? No, I don't, I don't think they'll probably spring for the Aurelian Soul. I think that Faker is a, definitely a capable player, picking something that's going to stick with it, uh, be able to match it in lane, and SKT's a capable team of not succumbing to that early pressure. Yeah, I agree. I think they'll first pick Caitlyn here. Uh, on SKT's side, we'll see what they pick up. Worth knowing that Bengi came in for this game. We didn't mention it right at the start, but no Blank. Blank played five games in a row in the middle, but it was Bengi at the start and Bengi at the end to bookend kind of this group mm. stage. And with the lock-in of Nami and Olaf, no mid laners have been picked up just yet. Do you think that SKT will give Faker the uh, the counter pick on this one, Papa Smoothie? I mean, support has been a popular counter pick, but obviously they have the Nami already, so they are set up to try and get Faker a good matchup. They tried to ignore Faker, and Flash was pounced, got a good matchup, camped the mid lane. Champion like Gleason can help mm. with that, but they should not be able to get both a playmaking jungler and a counter pick in the mid lane. Otherwise, Flash was a really setting SKT up to repeat the mistakes that cost SKT the reverse matchup. See if that's the case. And we are waiting for that next lock in from Flash Wars. Still not revealing the mid laner. It will be Poppy going into the top lane. Highly valued top laner in this tournament in terms of tanks. So the Maokai last game, which was uh, interesting coming out from the top laner of Amazing J. But it will be back to the Poppy and now back over to SKT for their picking phase. Looking for probably not the mid lane, so that would leave top and AD carriers. The most likely things to pick up here would be a Trundle pick. That's been a big pick for Duke and also Smeb when it comes to top lane. It's always been great against the Poppy, so they've kind of been granted a very safe top lane pick here. And then Bang gets his pick of AD carries. I hyped him as one of the three best Ezra's at the tournament and certainly could be a consideration in this round of the draft. Out of the remaining mid lane champions, uh, in terms of like the picking phase as well, who do you expect that both of these mid laners will pick up right now, Poe Belta? Mm. You gotta pick a blind mid laner against Faker. Mm -hmm. Go. What do you do? I'd probably, well, if it were me, uh, I'd, I'd probably go with something like Victor or, I don't know, Cassio's fine in lane, but really not that good versus Trundle and Olaf, I'd say. But um, yeah, I mean, the safest pick here is Victor or, or Aurelian if you're feeling really bold. And actually, SKT's team comp doesn't have too much hard CC, so Aurelian could be a pretty decent pick here. I personally really like the Aurelian Soul because honestly, just from a purely selfish perspective, I want to know what Faker picks against Aurelian mm. Soul. Does he have a champion? You know, Aurelian Soul and Syndra, it's been all about sitting in the back room, sitting in the peanut gallery, being like, what do you pick against these guys? And the answer against Syndra is not much. Against Aurelian Soul, some people have different ideas. So let's see. If it's something traditional, people try Cassiopeia, even though it doesn't really feel like you can punish that well. This could definitely be a comp they consider Cassiopeia in the rise band away. We'll see. Selecting onto the Aurelian Soul for a long time. We've got 10 seconds left. This is where, as a caster, you speak slowly and wait for them to lock in the pick and then say, ah, yes, this is the uh, Victor lock in here. But we haven't had it just yet. Just two seconds remaining. I will carry on talking. And it will be the lock in of Victor for Maple. Uh -huh. We asked for a safe blind pick mid lane. A lot of teams, including Samsung and even our expert over here, Pobel, to favor that Victor. Mm. Has been a standby in the mid lane. Cassio appears the risky matchup into the Victor. We actually had that as, I believe, our matchup when we did have this last casting combination. It was the Cassiopeia kind of missing that, that window true. of doing damage at the start, getting past level six, Victor getting hex core and really abusing the Cassiopeia. But do you think there's not that much left here really as options. I'd love to see Faker on the Aurelian Soul. I was gonna ask, yeah. He's played it once, wasn't super convincing, but this is the time in a match where even if they lose their first seed, to be like, hey, what about my Aurelian Soul? Why not? Or you can be boring uh, and pick Lysandra. I'm hoping for the Aurelian Soul. I really just want to see what Faker can do with the Space Dragon in this game. But in terms of those two picks, is Lysandra, if he does choose to lock it in, just a, a better pickup here? 
like likewise with like a Cassiopeia. It's Lion Wave Clear versus Lion Wave Clear. It's a champion that only I believe Westor has played at the tournament, so it feels like almost an old meta pick. What's your take on Lissandra into the Victor matchup for Belter? Mm, I think that, well, before teams would, as Victor would just win slowly and then eventually just outscale Lissandra, but teams have gotten a lot better at just forcing plays around the level six timing when you can roam and use your ultimate. And even just TPing to lane, Lissandra can constantly shove Victor under his turret. And now that Victor's hex core upgrade costs 250 more from one of the more recent patches, um, you can kind of get stuck in this rut where you're constantly being forced to back being shoved and can't upgrade. Small fun little fact here. It does also force the Victor to take cleanse. So you lose one mobility summoner, the power of Ghost on that three minute cooldown has been seen all throughout the tournament and keeping Victor without Ghost, a slow mage, a control mage, those collapse Victor plays that we sometimes see where he's there for the counter gank, so much harder with no Ghost. So we saw both these mid laner picks picked very late into the draft. So what does it do in terms of these full compositions? We've got the Trondle top lane, Olaf in the jungle course from SKT. It's something different from SKT. You know, this time it's not a true poke comp. They still have poke elements specifically with the Ezreal, but a bit more of a balanced comp. It's double TP, which they haven't been running so far this tournament. So interesting to see them once again pivot. I was hoping for the Aurelian Soul as kind of the new pick, but double TP for them at least is different. On the other side, the Flash Wolves, I think it's a lot of comfort for them. I would have loved to see the LeBlanc. I really like Maple's LeBlanc, but LeBlanc hasn't been a big pick this tournament. So it seems pretty standard stuff for Flash Wolves. That's my takeaway, at least. Mm -hmm. I mean, Poppy, Victor, safe in terms of getting through the laning phase and being late game team fighters. Pobelta, in terms of mid laners, who would you rather be if you were in this game? Would you want to be the Lissandra or the Victor? Mm, it seems like Flash Wolves team comp is a bit susceptible to engage. They have they have a lot of disengage, but um, not that much mobility from like Poppy and Brahm. So I think that something like Trundle Lissandra can really blow up one of the front liners. Well, we're going to get into game here. Flash Walls and SKT, the final game of the group stages. We'll see how this one goes. But if you have any questions for us, remember to jump on Twitter, use that hashtag AskTheCasters, and tweet at LOL Esports. And we'll try and answer as many of your questions in game as we can with uh, time demanding as well. But we'll get into this and see how the mid laners do. Maper versus Faker. It could be the penultimate or the final matchup of the day if Flash Walls are to once again defeat SK Telecom. It would force a tiebreaker against C9. So. That's why I said NA fans really hoping that SKT can end up 5-1 mm. in the group. Small other point to consider is that with this double teleport, Lissandra's very safe in a side lane. Trondle does outspit push the poppy, and Victor has cleanse, so he's going to find it difficult. He's quite immobile, so he doesn't have the same safety in a side lane. doesn't have access to Lissandra's glacial path, for example. So if the 1-3-1 is well executed, and given that SKT have been super on board with executing the poke comps well today, if they can also execute 1-3-1, one, one, we would have seen late game team fighting Poke and 1-3-1 one, one, all done well by SKT this tournament. And if you're preparing for them, if you draw them, which uh -huh. of course will be coming after this uh, group ends, if you do draw them, you'd be like ripping your hair out of them. <laughs> like, which, which one are they going to play? I hope we'll get reaction cams on the teams oh, as well yes. <laughs> when oh. the group draw happens. But in terms of this early laning phase here, Pobelta, is there anything we should be looking out for in terms of this matchup? Hmm. Just have to keep an eye on Victor's mana pool pretty much early in this because it's really easy to get um, baited into using all your mana to get really easy trades on the Sandra. You know, proc your Q and E, get that Thunderlord's proc. But if you if you go too aggressively and the Sandra just TP's back, then you'll start to have no pressure against the Sandra in lane. And how does Lissandra as well manage her mana? Because of course she has the passive as well. Does she want to uh, constantly spam those Qs and try and shove Maple into tower? No, I don't think you ever want to be just always spamming your spells on any mid laner besides Aurelian Soul. You always just want to um, just be last hitting and using your spells to pressure the other opponent. And Faker's so smart about controlling where he pushes the wave. For example, we saw him have the pressure in lane to just leave, put down a ward, get information about Lee Sin's jungle path. He knows what to expect. SKT expect Flash Wolves to stick with the camp Faker plan. So anything to make Lee Sin predictable, even though it's pre-6 Lee Sin where he's going to largely be farming and counter ganking, helps SKT's game plan because they have information on where the Flash Wolves jungler is. Yeah, just in case he decides to turn up in the mid lane as well. And do you think that will impact Bengi and his route as, as well as this game progresses? Do you think he'll look for more counter ganks mid lane or say, hey Faker, you know what's coming your way. Just try and play defensive in lane and I'll do things in the other lanes. Mm, no, I don't think there will be that much mid focus from Flash Wolves that game because Lee Sin Victor is in a very potent ganking combo, especially against Lissandra who can just use her E to get away. 
So mid lane will probably go a bit slowly this game. If there are any aggressors, more likely it would be SKT going free gank. Well then, if the fans have questions for Belter and I, it's just going to be wave clear wars. We have then plenty maybe, of time. <laughs> exactly, plenty of time to throw the questions over. What's the hashtag, Papa Smithy? Hashtag ask the casters. There you have it. I've um, been media trained over here. Yeah, yeah. It's all coming out on there right now. Faker placing another ward off to the top side now. Uh, had some knowledge that Castle would be in the top side, so just in case he decides to try and gank him from behind, means he can play towards the bottom side of the lane here. Also, his jungle is there as well. Are there any intricacies about this matchup that, you know, the average player or viewer might not appreciate for Belta? I mean, the blue buff going off will, will warp the match a little bit, but before first buy, especially just a 1v1, is there any intricacies between Lissandra and Victor? Because on a simple level, they seem like pretty di pretty similar wave clear mid laners. Yeah, the early laning phase is pretty simple, actually. Um, there, there's, I wouldn't say there's anything complex or hidden about the matchup, honestly. It's just like uh, uh, Victor is going to win trades and Lissandra is just going to TP back. That's pretty much it. What about first buy? Because, you know, you were kind of talking about the fact 1250 gold now for the Hex score. That's pretty straightforward buy for the Victor. On Faker's side, are you rushing for Abyssal? We see a Negatron, so that's clearly going to be the route here now that there's CDR on the Abyssal. Is there ever a world where you can feel safe enough to go like a Morella Nomicon against the Victor? No, usually you typically don't build Morellos on Lissandra anymore. If anything, if you want some something besides the Abyssal Rush, then you'd go Roa if you can afford the Catalyst, let's say. But you pretty much always go like Abyssal Sorx or something versus Victor because Victor doesn't typically build any magic resist early on. And, and so, so why why the Rod of Ages over? Like why the change away from Morella? Is the health like what's the, what's the relevant factor of the Rod of Ages versus the old CDR? low health build that kind of used to be the path for Lissandra? Uh, well, Lissandra has CDR options now in Zhonya's and Protobelt, okay. whereas before Protobelt didn't exist and Zhonya's didn't give CDR. Also, you can just go CDR boots now. So um, it's a good point, because Abyssal Zhonya, always the core of a Lissandra build. Now they have 20% CDR included on them with the changes, so... Yeah. I guess you don't want to be too overloaded on CDR on Lissandra. How does Lissandra play out like 1v1 trades and also skirmishes? Is there a particular combo that you want to use, like Ian first and then immediately hit the hit the root? Um, it depends. If you're going for like pure damage and you want to get the E damage in, Faker always maxes E second on Lissandra, most mid laners do. So if you're really gunning for that full damage, then you just flash ulti and use the E to get extra damage in. But otherwise, you know, you'll just E in at them to get close and not use your flash. Is there anything on the Victor side? I'm going to pause just for a second as uh, Bengi walks into the enemy jungle, finds himself a sword up, but he's going to clear out this ward. So is there anything from Maple's side in terms of how he lays his uh, spells? Uh, no, he should just be holding onto his W until Lissandra uses the Ice Claw, of course, and then... Face roll? Yeah, he gets, <laughs> if Lissandra gets in Q range, Q her, of course. If you can E her, E her. And if you can ult here, ult here. If you get a mid lane matchup, mid lane matchup involving Victor, you pretty much know how it's gonna go. As long as he doesn't have to back and buy like a Dorans because he gets ganked early, he will get the first hex core. Push lane a plenty. There is that first hex core upgrade. Will be augment E upgrade. That is always the way forward. And it's gonna be more, I think, about the teleport usage. Faker uses first TP to get back to lane. And actually, interesting. They're gonna go for a cheeky blue buff invade here. Looks more like a top dive because Victor had to base, whereas Lissandra TP'd back. Yeah, with the timings, you're right. Lissandra and is level six. Yeah, they spot Lee in mid, so this is just a 3v1 right here. And if Poppy stays under church, he'll die, but it feels like they know that uh, SKT is coming, so they're just going to back off. So it's a good timing, as you're saying, from Faker. He used the teleport to get back to mid lane, and he didn't need to be in the mid lane. He pushed the lane up, and that's why he has the freedom to walk top. And even if he just walks top, reassesses, walks back. He didn't lose anything in the mid lane, so it's no cost for what could have potentially been a really big return if the turret dive was available. If the turret dive happened, how does Faker play that out? Does he want to save ultimate for himself and then tank the tower and then, of course, like, cut the aggro, or does he immediately want to just try and burst the target down? Uh, Faker wants to take aggro first there and ulti, put in a Q, maybe W if he can get close enough, and then just stay on the outskirts of the turret range, taking damage for Trundle and Olaf to finish him out because once Lissandra puts in those few spells, her damage output is done, so it's most ideal for her to take the aggro. I mean, the, the only other small point, though, is I guess if Poppy started to channel the ultimate, you could ult the Poppy to uh, stop the stop the channel from going through, to stop, say, Trundle and Olaf from being knocked away. Olaf can ult, but hmm. Trundle could be affected. But I agree, you can either choose lead and tank, 
and then reset the aggro with the self ult or look for a cheeky interrupt, I guess, with the aggressive Lissandra choice. Is that the way that Faker gets ahead in this game? Because when we see like Lissandra games, she's always roaming first and then we very rarely see Victor able to quickly chase after her. Uh, will Victor maybe look for any chases in this game or will he just constantly push out the mid wave as soon as he sees Faker leave? Uh, Victor will generally try and match the wave push of Lissandra whenever she goes through him and then follow. Um, it it kind of depends on which team is pressuring harder, like who's going to have push pressure because both of these characters are really good at pushing in the lane. Uh, we have a question from Twitter coming in from at Brandon Horsley says, post six, which jungle mid duo has the stronger two versus two in this game? There is an interesting one. I mean, you got to say Olaf does have the dueling advantage 1v1 against Lee Sin, but 2v2 I think is actually pretty close. What's your first impression between the Victor Lee Sin and the Lissandra Olaf? I would say Victor is always weaker versus an all-in 2v2 mid combo because he has no mobility and even this game he doesn't have Ghost. So uh, Flash Wolves can definitely play defensively and not give any ground, but if they just straight up 2v2 clash then SKT will just mow down Flash Wolves 2v2 pretty much. Lissandra is also one of the best mids of 2v2 because of the hard CC. Oh, I feel like someone's gonna die here. Faker immediately exhausted out, but Sword Art, yeah, no way he can get away, and that's first blood as well to the edge. Well, Bang gonna be happy with that one. Lots of TPs coming in now. Faker is cutting off to the side. He's already used his Flash, but there you can see uh, using the E for damage and also the teleport. He's gonna lock up a couple people using the W, but now he seems in no man's land, just gonna walk into the tower. It didn't seem like anyone had his back when it came to the re-engage. He had the like, option you, to Baker. use the Glacial Path defensively. He had the option to use the, the ult to just ult the Poppy and get out with Glacial Path. But he went in aggressively. No one else on the same wavelength. Ends up being a one-for-one. One. Equal resources used. But intriguing to see Faker, at least from our perspective, which is very different to the normal match perspective. I mean, the roam looks pretty good for Belter. And he doesn't use the ult. doesn't have to use it at this point. What do you think of his decision-making towards the end of this fight, though, Faker? Um, well, he was, he was pretty much dead here. Like, I don't i don't really think someone is going to die here, pretty much. Sure. And if Faker tries to run and pulls them all to his team, then maybe maybe he's not going to die, but maybe one or two dudes from his team die. So really, it's just picking, like, who's going to die here. Yeah. And then Faker had already used the E to go in like that, so he's like, okay, just leave me. It's okay. And we kind of see people accept their fate. We saw mm -hmm. Smoothie for, on his Alistair in an early game kind of just take the last Jin Bullet because he didn't want anyone else to even be slowed and potentially be taken down. So Faker gives up his life, and maybe something that supports your theory is that he didn't use Flash at any point during the turret dive. So he keeps the summoner. He can use that potentially in the future aggressively and just gives up his life. Gets him a back and he's back to lane already. Also in terms of item build, what do you think about Faker now picking up the Ionian boots? Of course he didn't use Flash and Teleport, so there's the added benefit now that he's picked up those shoes. Mm -hmm. Well he went CDR boots and he's going Abyssal. And he has 10% from Rune, so that's already 30%. As a Sanya, you're always going to go Zanya, so that's already 40 So that to me indicates that he's not going to go Proto Belt or any other CDR item. Yeah, the Proto Belt, Lissandra picked up a lot of uh, play when Lissandra came back into the meta briefly for a few weeks in the middle of the season, but Faker always has his own way of playing the game and it's going a little bit different. Also getting the completed boots too means that he's now going to be more and more in range for the flash ult or just even the ult on the Victor, so aggressive threatening nonetheless. Faker just hovering around the outside of his lane, but Karsa is already there just to uh, deter him and make him take the long route. But he is teleporting Teleport. down to bot lane now. He does have all the summoners, but he does cancel at the last minute. And Caitlyn double trapped on the ward, so he would have come in and been instantly interrupted, even with Flash. So, probably smart to cancel. It does also mean he's going to get the wave push advantage. So, at least we'll be able to wrestle back a little bit of CS in mid lane, given these about 10 behind. So, we're going to hit another lull here as it uh, becomes mini wave ping pong. So, I have another question from Twitter. Uh, Matthias uh, Perriere, I'm Pereira. sorry for destroying your name. There we go. Papa Smurfy's got it. When is it better to buy a Leandri instead of a Void Staff? Is it worth buying both? Thanks. You're welcome. Well, it's a pretty uh, general question, obviously. Is a Leandri the thought for any of these champions? Mm, generally, if there's only like some specific champions that it's really good to go Leandri's on, like Aurelian Soul, Rumble. Brand, Rumble, um, just Malzahar, something that's like really tanky or has a lot of damage over time. So not most mid lane champions, but you should never replace Void Staff with it. I think if you're ever gonna go Void, then you go Void and then you go Aurelian. Or er, sorry, Leandri's is mm -hmm. like a sixth item. If you go Aurelian as a sixth item, that'd be pretty <laughs> sweet actually. Yeah. Yeah. 
play that one in the shop as well. Make sure to keep the questions coming using uh, hashtag AskTheCasters, and you can have your name butchered by me on air. And also have your question answered as well. So I mean, if you're a recent player, you, you might think of an item like Leandri and, and think about how armor penetration works, because it's all about bonus armor penetration, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing about Void Staff, and one of the reasons why people keep kind of building it earlier and earlier, like you don't see a first item, but it becomes second sometimes. It's not just, oh, look, they built a Negatron Club, right. I want to get magic penetration for that, because it works off base magic resist. Everyone starts with 30, some tanks with 32, and then they get magic resist per level. A lot of people take magic resist in their runes, either flat or per level, there's always a magic penetration because it includes that base value is always pretty effective. So while Leandris works well with damage over time, equalizer, rumble, as we're saying, brand who has the passive that keeps burning, it can, it's often very strong, but it's niche because void stuff kind of fills that need much more cleanly on non-damage over time uh, mages. So this game has been pretty slow. Faker now going back into the bottom lane, clearing out another wave. Uh, Pobalta, from your experience in slow games like this, when you're playing like double control mage mid, do you ever get a little itchy and restless and just want to try and make a play? Mm, no, not really. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you just you just kind of have to stick to the plan, make the play that's the right play, and mm -hmm. which isn't going to fail. And so since he has TP going up, he's just going bot, and Ezreal can start to poke down Victor mid and push the turret because they've already taken the bot tier one. And we'd mentioned this. The Victor, the Lissandra, very adept in the side lane, very safe, can go just push very quickly or could hold, has a very good teleport gang, even though teleport's about, what, 20 seconds away from cooldown. Tunnel's having a happy old time in top lane, pushing in the poppy. And once you finally finish an item, it could have been Ice Spawn Rush, it's actually a Mana Moon Rush and a Sheen on the side of Bang. They've got the objective, they've got the turret. They're safe in the mid lane, just healing up. And so basically they're getting access to the most minions possible and the safest farm on their AD carry when Ezreal's in its farming phase. One more question from Twitter, Jared Welch. I can pronounce that name. How should Lissandra utilize her TP through this game? We've seen a couple of times Faker's looked to do it so far in this game. Mm -hmm. Well. Yeah, you saw it earlier in the game, but Victor isn't very good at following the roam if Lissandra can manage to push in the wave before he can. Like, that's happened a few times this game. So, basically, you just push in the roam, or push in the lane, and then you try and TP somewhere behind or near where you're going to make a play. And ideally, Victor is still stuck in mid wave clearing, and you just have so much tempo advantage that you just one shot them instantly with the Lissandra ulti, and then you get out. And you see that the Lissandra's role in this game has evolved. It was just matching wave clear in mid lane, putting down wards. Now it's side lane farming. So it allows her to be relevant globally instead of just setting up ganks. So, I mean, it's still effectively B for a 5v5, but it allows her to play the whole map, not just be trapped in mid lane like Victor, who has cleanse, has flash, wants to take blue, laser minions, and then reset. Faker back into his natural habitat of clearing out minions in the bottom lane. Uh, 138 farm as well. Uh, what happened to the uh, de uh, deficit in terms of farm? Has it just been because he's been trying to make these TP plays? Because Maple, uh, pretty like on the money in terms of in terms of farm. Yeah, actually, that's something I wanted to talk about. So early on in the game, Victor got blue buff, which creates kind of a CS deficit because Lissandra tried to come and push in a siege canyon minute wave with Olaf and was not able to. So that was a little bit, and then he roamed bot, and then he died, and then <laughs> their bot lane missed. To uh, the Flash Wolves bot lane missed a wave because they had died, but Faker also died, so Faker missed a wave. And then Faker roamed bot again, and then Faker roamed top once, while Victor had just stayed mid, and then that led to the CS deficit. It's also worth noting that Bang has picked up a lot of CS that his opponent number hasn't picked up, so it's not like CS is just going completely wanting, like it ends up being a CS trade because yeah. Bang was the one with pressure in bot lane. The jungler does have a 10 CS advantage, which is nice nonetheless. Yeah, this is, uh, this is classic sacrificial mid lane gameplay. Just like giving stuff up so your side laners get really far ahead. You say classic, but I see you like kind of like sigh and take a lower posture. <laughs> You're not a big fan of giving up farm, are you, Popelter? No, I, I, I don't mind it. I, I've done it a lot. So. Oh, a role player. A real here. team player. <laughs> we have another question from Twitter, though. Uh, Joshua Staten says, does playing against someone like Faker change the way you play, or do you try to ignore the name? Do you turn names off when you're in game pro battle? Yeah, I always turn names off. Um, yeah, I mean, you do your best to try and ignore the prestige behind the name, but there's always like a little bit of... This guy's Faker. Yeah. Speaking of... He's in the bottom lane, ulting everyone. It does get knocked back, but we'll flash out of the way of the Ezra ultimate. That's pretty nice. That's a really good him. angle for the Sandra Q. Yeah, he had a pretty good um, W into cell fault, hitting three people there with everything. Very fast reactions to flash away. He would have taken too much damage from the long-range damage, so keeps alive. Faker doing his thing. 
It's the map player that's the biggest story, though. We've been talking about a 1v1 matchup. When's the Sandra versus Victor? Mid lane mechanics aren't going to be quite as important, but just think about the texture of this game. It wasn't Faker on Cassio getting ganked, ganked, ganked. It was a lot more about playmaking. It was a lot more about playing the map. It's been the story today. Mm. SKT taking very risky comps, execution heavy, poke comps especially, and now the 1-3-1, one, one, but the execution, including this gank, was very clean. Very, very true. You can see Faker coming down here. Talk me through his like decision making as a mid laner here, Pobelta. Well, bot lane turret is already dead on the side of Flash Wolf, so he knows he can TP behind there and chase him down the long lane. So already that's a really, really good position to be in. And then they all clumped up for the AoE, and even here they're clumping up for the Q, so it's just it was a very opportune position and he took advantage of it. And Poppy, when she's there aggressively, when she's making the aggressive moves, does a lot, but when she came in late on the teleport, you kind of need time to either uh, charge up the hammer for a disengage or look for a pick and kind of was caught between two. Didn't really accomplish much and that allows SKT to snowball. It's only 3,000 gold. It's certainly not a big lead, but remember, this is the bogey team for SKT. This mm -hmm. is the team. I mean, Flashwell said it. We, we can beat Korean teams. It's the NA teams, the other teams that give us bigger struggles. So SK Telecom, long way away from actually taking down this game. Real wrench in the works. And we have one more Twitter question. Keep them coming using the hashtag Ask the Casters. Adam, uh, Adam Bowen says, what do you think is the best counter to the popular Victor pick at Worlds? Of course, Faker is playing the Lissandra and picked that last pick in this game as well. I'm guessing it's the big S. I'm guessing it's Syndra. Yeah, Syndra is really good against Victor. Usually that's banned. So, uh, I mean, Lissandra this game is actually looking really well. Not as a 1v1 lane counter, but as you can see, he's getting a lot of roam plays and TP plays off. Let's so, think a bit more edge mode. What about like Zed, for example? Eh, no, Zed, Zed's a really bad pick right now. I would not say Zed. I'm trying to think of things that are good versus Victor in lane right now. Hmm. You got... Anything cheesy? Anything cheesy. Anything I can play? Anything you can play? <laughs> he only plays cheesy picks. That's I play true. ranked with this guy. It's like, I'm an Alawi top main. I'm like, really? <laughs> I went 0-10. That did happen. Yeah, that, that did go well. In NA and in Europe a little bit, people were favoring Zillion as kind of the okay. mm -hmm. Victor counter pick because you just zone Victor with your bombs during fights, and then Victor, who tries to just get that fast one shot on someone with all his bursts, you just revive them. So that's kind of annoying to deal with, but we're, we're not really seeing it rear its head here at Worlds. I mean, we saw the matchup once. Uh, yeah. Faker yeah. and Bjergsen, no, sorry, Bjergsen and, and Crown and Crown, Crown played yeah. the matchup, and it just felt like the AoE. It wasn't so much with the single target deletion, it was the AoE damage, and Bjergsen also misjudged some trades in the mid lane, so. Yeah, well, he, he got solo killed. He got solo killed, that's <laughs> yeah. fair. That did happen. I'm saying it the caster way. He may have misjudged the trade <laughs> that led to his death. <laughs> oh, caster language. Well, Baker, funny enough, he's back in bot lane. Uh, he's picked up the proto belt now, though, as his second item. That's uh, a 40%. It is, that is 40%. What do you think about this one, Pobelta? Well, doesn't need blue now. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, that's, that's pretty weird. I guess he... <laughs> I mean, I, I, som I sometimes did this when I was like playing Lissander and I first started uh, using Proto Belt, and uh -huh. I kept forgetting. Damn, this item gives me 10% CDR. I'm, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be over 40%. How blue intensive is Lissandra as we move to the late game? Because uh, you think, okay, very short, spammable Q. Sounds like she has a lot of mana, but to me, it, it's all about Lissandra's first rotation. Kind of, obviously, there is maybe a second rotation, but the first rotation seems the most important. So, is blue core on this champion just purely from a mana regen perspective, given that he already has 40% CDR? Not really, because Lissandra's passive makes her pretty good at conserving mana, and she's a champion with very low mana cost. That's why players don't even go mana items on her. And actually, I believe her mana costs were upped after, like, the patch directly after this is played on. Oh, so okay. now you can't really do that, but right now everyone's happy just going this build with Proto Belt, Abyssal, not going any mana items, and still just being all right. And that would mean that 10% CDI could be granted to the Ezreal, who would also hit 40%, so. We'll see if that actually happens. We might just see the blue buff donation just purely for manager regen reasons, but... Oh, well, it's it's more crucial because of the 15% AP and the 2 AP per level. That's true. You. So, yeah. And also, um, it, it could be that he's running 4 MR and scaling AP. I mean, I, I can't tell for sure whether or not he has scaling CDR or scaling AP. Actually, can I, like, hover over something and check that? Pampus maybe he's got you. Boom. Uh, 37%. So he does have scaling... CDR, I would guess, to get to 37%. Mm. Yeah, he does. So blue buff, maybe still it's useful, at least for CDR, yeah. till about level 17, 18, then it might just be a wash. 
And while we have a bit more time, I will ask another Twitter question coming in from Sol, who says, this is for Pobelter. Why is GLP 800 not seen on AP mid laners other than Aurelian Sol? Mm, generally, you're not playing a type of character that's so melee and in your face is Aurelian Sol in mid lane, and that's when GLP is most valuable, when you can put it on squishies and just chase them and not care about anything like Aurelian Sol. As most mid laners, you need to kind of keep your range, and you're not able to use GLP on any squishies and chase them. Here comes the fight here as well, chasing out the sword off. Faker just getting all the damage off, everyone clumping up, but uh, Maple is trying to burst him down, drags him into the gravity field. There's a nice kill there, two for one. And Maple now getting chased down for his privilege. And yeah, Maple is really dead. Carter still chasing under tower. This is going really well for SKT, chasing so far. Another kill, four kills, and MMD has to walk back into the tower. Faker's dead, both mid laners are dead, but uh, MMD does manage to survive. 4 for 1 is still pretty good for SKT. Yeah, nice aggressive rotation once again. Bang was basically free hitting through the back end. This man is wonderful at the Ezra's Ooh. Q accuracy is one of his greatest traits. And yeah, a really big win for SK Telecom. Continuing the snowball, keeping the pace high to the game, and Bengi casually clearing on very low health. Yeah, and SKT is actually so good at playing these comps like Trundle, Lissandra, Ezreal, where you just kite and then you go in for that one explosive moment. It's actually, like, we, we would watch um, what they did on Ezreal and we would learn and be like, okay, guys, we just have to play like SKT does when we play Ezreal. And, like, it's one of those things where, like, the nameplates come into factor, but is the reason for that communication? Because to me, it's very clear. This is the time to disengage. This is the exact time. You kind of have to be one-minded to keep re-engaging and disengaging, it seems like a lot of teams at Worlds have struggled to pull off that playstyle. Mm, I think it just comes down to these dudes playing together for so long, mm -hmm. like Faker and Bengi have been playing together since like, what, Season 3? Yeah. That's correct. And then, no, Season 2 even, I believe. Yes? No? Early Season 3, I believe Early it was. Early Season 3, okay. But yeah, I mean, they've just had so much time to get comfy with each other. They, they probably know what each other's gonna do before they even do it. Uh, take you from the other perspective as well, when you play against players you've played against for a long time, uh, do you, does their like tendencies and your knowledge of their tendencies affect your play very much? Like, is there like a mid laner that you've just mid laned against so much, I guess if you think about ones like Shifter, I guess, been around a long time, Bjergsen has been around a long time. Do you ever feel like there's a specific like rivalry or specific like, a thing that happens between two mid laners just because they've played so much in solo queue and scrims and on that like, it's different from say another person or another matchup between these two kind of players? Yeah, mid laners always have tendencies. Like, Kuhi's always the type of mid laner to look for early roams and, like, kind of, I guess, cheesy plays, sure. as you would call it. But I, I mean, just, of those. Well. <laughs> <laughs> just roams for your team. And then Bjergsen's the kind of type of mid laner who's um, very prioritizing his own lane, his own blue buff. Jensen is, like, that mantra to an extreme, and he's very focused on his own lane and securing an advantage. So, every, every mid laner has their own kind of style and kind of habits. And even on research, you can see things where it's like jungle proximity to mid lane. Some mm. players like Jensen, super, super high, especially going into the postseason. Some other laners get a little bit less attention. So I, I feel like mid lane has really evolved into the 2v2 you know, over the years. Sure. Much less about assassins trying to burst each other's solo kills. So those tendencies, whether it's leaving lane or calling the jungler, are just really important research to have when you go into the matchups, I'm sure. Yeah, so right here, Faker actually uh, showed he's a human being and made a mistake. <laughs> he's going to overcap on CDR because he's, he's going to have 40% already from Abyssal, Protobelt, CDR, and his runes. But he's also going Zhonya's, which gives him 10% over that. Uh -huh. But Pobelta maybe doesn't need the runes. That's how good he is. <laughs> he's just like, whatever. I, I could have had these blank. I took CDR up a level. Yeah, you know? could have gone full CDR. Next I'm level Faker. BM right here. <laughs> yeah, I mean, at least he's getting like the lower summer spell cooldown out of the CDR boost. So it's not totally wasted, but... Yeah, whoops. Would you say, I mean, long time ago now for viewers, especially recently, changed CD efforts from 15% to 10% plus 10% summoner. At first instinct, everyone's like, oh god, like, where's my 5% gone? But to me, it always seemed like a buff. I mean, was that kind of your read when they added the summoner spell cooldown to, to the CDR boots? Not really, because before, I'm pretty sure people would just go 15% in runes, and yep. then I think, I think there were a lot more 10% CDR items back then. Mm -hmm. People didn't really go Morellos, so... It was, uh, I, I think mid laners were stronger back then, honestly. Now you need to pretty much fit in an extra item, sure. cap out on CDR. So even though you can make the flash cannon play, it's just a little bit more often, you still, I guess, because I, I feel like everything has 10% CDR now, so it's kind <laughs> yeah. of, I feel like not over capping on CDR feels harder it's than ever, struggle. just given how 
even Zonia's of all items has CDR built into it. Yep. Uh, 28 minutes into this game, SKT with a 6,000 gold lead and three towers as well, seeding down mid lane. Uh, got another question from the Twitterverse. This one comes from Trim the Yordle, who says, Why aren't Lux or Xerath played anymore? Wouldn't their role be like an AP gin of sorts? I mean, I have a quick answer. I actually asked one of the noted Lux and Xerath players, Froggen, in, in the uh, mm -hmm. in the Castle Lounge yesterday about Xerath in particular, because I feel like Xerath can do decently against Syndra just because she purely outranges, but the big thing for him, especially on the Xerath side, was mana costs are just too high with the options right now to effectively harass and wave clear as much as you do on Xerath. Do you have any thoughts on Xerath and Lux, you know, these long-range mages that could fit the niche but just aren't being played at all? Yeah, the mana costs are too high, and it's really difficult to play aggressively on those champions. You have to be playing really defensively, and you can't really have that in a mid laner right now, where you're just kiting back the entire time. You also need to be able to be able to like flash in and do something crazy and engage on them, like Syndra, Rise, Lissandra, even Victor has a potential to flash in and make a crazy AOE play. See Faker just trying to make a play happen in the top lane. Uh, and we'll actually jump back onto NL. There's the E for a bit of damage. Catches him with the Q, but Sordot coming in here. Faker's out of mana. So maybe we'll just give the kill over <laughs> to uh, to NL. Yeah, there we go. Bit of experience for the support, but didn't want to get an auto attack and take the kill. Yeah. So what was the play there from Faker? Was that like a good thing to do at 29 minutes into a game as a mid laner for ADC? Uh, it, it gives you like a slight advantage, I guess, because Caitlyn's missing out on some farm on that lane, but... Oh, oh Duke. <laughs> Jumping down on Maple. Duke just picks up that kill, and now middle turret will be falling as well, so both mid laners off the map. I mean, going for that aggressive a die, pulling in multiple members, means that you're free to do whatever you want with your other four. They could have put down wards instead. They had the inside track to the inner mm -hmm. turret, they take two, they get a dive. And now SKT, they've still got Teleport on the Lissandra, don't forget that. So in 10 seconds, they can make this a 5v5 and they're starting up the bar. They are doing that. Yeah, they're and definitely he... looking for a turn here with the TP. Sword Art just walks in and oh, uh, doesn't he, want to be he here anymore. pinged on his way. You see the spam things going <laughs> down, like, I'm coming, guys. Take a TPing behind. Yeah, this oh. spells, so. <laughs> he doesn't even need all, yeah. At this moment, so, NL knew he screwed up. Yeah, that's a pretty free Baron, I think. Fake's gonna get this farm first though. Lissandra still has ulti, so when Lee Sin comes in to try and smite seal, uh, he can just flash ulti Lee Sin, they can burst him. Uh, yeah, it doesn't really seem like there's a good way for flash balls to try and steal. Casa is around though, so we'll see if we can get over the wall. Yeah, smart to peel away, even though Lissandra, as you say, can halt the Lee Sin, wasn't in range at the time, so stop burning the Baron. Down to about 4,000 though. They're gonna go for the finish and then... Oh, wow. There's a big interrupt on Faker, so now Lee Sin oh, does have a chance. This is actually He's a pretty bad position for SKT. Casa's over the wall. It's becoming a 50-50. Faker just killed Mabel, though. And where did that go? <laughs> okay, I guess it doesn't matter. Yeah, over to uh, <laughs> <laughs> over to Casa, but SKT just murdered everyone in the pit. Now MMD will die very slow. Cool move, though. Bang, I believe, was hit by the Q from Lee Sin. Mm. Actually jumped over the pit to stop Lee Sin having a taxi to get into the Baron pit, so Lee Sin ended up getting in anyway. It's got the smite off. Holds some of the pressure. Now suddenly it's not going to be the world's freest inhibitor with the comp they have plus Baron buff. Nice steal from Karsa, but it's just a buy time. Let's watch the replay though, because it did look uh, like... I expected Faker to take the either, but he got interrupted by He got interrupted by, by Poppy. E, so so yeah. watch Bang here. He actually jumps out to both ah. DPS and not allow Lee Sin away to get in. Of course, Lee Sin can still ward jump. Yeah, it felt kind of fishy because he got into the pit and Baron was so low. And then Bang goes to kind of ult Karsa, but just ends up leashing the last bit of health. Nice stuff from Karsa. What do you think about Faker flashing uh, like basically across the pit to kill Maple? He was also in flash range of the Lee Sin, for example, using his ultimate. Uh, honestly, didn't really catch it. I was too busy focusing on the Baron HP and what Lee Sin was doing. And I'm sure the same story is there for Faker. Even with clear calls, you're so frenetic that we can see it slowed, space, uh, slowed speed and still mm. very difficult to always make those correct moves. But SKT do mop up all the Baron buffs, barring maybe one on a respawn, so they're still in a very comfortable spot. Uh, we do have another question from Twitter. This one comes in from the Free Fail, who says, Why did Faker choose to go Lissandra instead of Cass? Wouldn't Cass be better for their team comp? Uh, I think Faker's just gotten punished too hard every time he's tried to fill out Cass in competitive. Last time he played with Splash Balls, he picked Cassio and died to some ganks, and then. When he played in LCK as well, Cassio vs Aurelian Soul, uh, it didn't turn out that well. Again, he was just getting ganked and camped a lot, and 
Cassio, I feel, is a champion that feels really good because she's so strong 1v1 and in laning phase, but because she's so susceptible to being ganked and pressured and caught out, uh, doesn't translate that well on stage. I agree with that. I mean, Faker just hasn't had the jungle pressure some of the other Cassio players have had. And it's still a pick he will consider and play in a best of five, but I think in a best of one, after the kind of haunting uh, reverse matchup between these two teams, sure, just felt more comfortable to move away. We thought maybe he'd opt into it, but went for the Lissandra, went for kind of the team champion, and although his own score isn't fabulous, he's made the plays he needed to. Uh, oh. Was this one of the plays that SK needed? <laughs> <laughs> Walked into their jungle, insta popped over the wall. That was unfortunately watered from Flash Wolves. Duke That's, is just all over yeah, they're Maple just, though. They're still just fighting 4v5. They don't really care. And uh, they're they're winning against Baron 4v5, so that's pretty nice. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, SKT just, uh, yeah, pretty big in this game. Oh, um, and uh, another reason he picked Lissandra instead of Cassio is because you need hard CC to pair really well with something like Olaf or Ezreal, which work really well with hard CC but lack it. So if you pick Cassio there, then you have too much soft CC, too much uh, just damage dealing, not enough hard CC. And you get the worst of Victor in this game because he's not able to take Ghost and he's always kind of the, the follow mage. He's like, I'm going to wave clear, then assess my options. Forcing him into cleanse stops him really being, being able to get to the counter against with Cinnamon. The replay, well, he was in a ward, so died instantly. But then you get to see someone like Bang on a champion's comfortable, on knowing the limits of the Ezreal going in aggressively. And so SKT know the spot and it's... Impressive to see them be so aggressive down their mid lane. Yeah, even while Faker just ran all over them. Oh, Maple, he's in the bush. There's Duke as well, but the oh, just oh, got wow. pulled back into yeah, the, the kick e. got interrupted. <laughs> um, yeah, I think Duke's just going to walk away. Uh, he is going to get ulted as well. Well, that's a flash. Yeah, Rylai's doesn't get the last sap off. But was that was that a good thing or a bad thing that he got pulled back into the gravity field? Uh. I think in the end it didn't have that much impact. Like he would have ended up in melee range of Victor and Victor would have had to back out a little bit, but he's still getting kited the entire time with Rylai, so I think it would have been the same result, honestly. And 35 minutes into this game, SKT with a pretty strong advantage, three dragons, uh, pretty significant goal lead as well, up in kills, up in towers. Another question from Twitter, far from Forte says, if the game is dragged into late game, who has the advantage? And do you think we'll get there? Um, if we're talking like, six items and I would say Flash Wolves would because Victor and Caitlyn mm -hmm. scale better than Lissandra and Ezreal I would say but you know like four items five items I think SKT still has the edge and they're gonna hit those spikes way earlier yeah I agree lead. I completely agree with Pobelter I mean it's also assuming that the two teams run at each other with six items like Poppy famously gets completely out split pushed by Trundle so there's kind of the double teleport the one three one to consider that Flash Wolves really don't have good answers to but specifically at six items, choosing to fight over a Baron or something to decide the game, I think Flash will have this slight edge. We'll see if we actually get there, because oh. Maple just oh. got deleted in the mid lane by Bang and Wolf. No, that was just Bang. They got deleted in the mid lane by Bang there. And I think SKT are probably going to start seeding. There's a Duke in the bottom lane. Yeah, the game's always looking pretty rough when you can get assassinated by yeah. uh, Ezreal <laughs> by the being ADC. in the forward. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, Ezreal casually has a Mercurial Scimitar completion short of six items. Mm -hmm. So it's absolutely massive in this game, as these two guys are massive, but in less fun ways. Very true. <laughs> uh, how do you feel as a mid laner, specifically as a victor, when you were 1v1 by the enemy ADC poo battle? <laughs> oh, man. It's, it's not a good feeling. And usually it's pretty hard to siege against Caitlyn like this, but because Victor's not even alive, they can just do it. Mintawa's dead, Inhib's dead, Faker's alive still, and I think uh, SKT will back away and be pretty happy with how that went. Baron's up in a minute. I mean, games like this have been few and far between for SKT. Back in spring, it was all about Lulu mid, Bang does his thing in the late game, fantastic late game team fight, or more evolution at that time, or other picks. You know, for the last year and a half, honestly, it was a really big strategy for SKT. Even though it's not a utility mid, they've tried to plug and play the Karma, and it's worked and it hasn't. The Lissandra's at least a different mid laner to a Cassiopeia, to a pure damage mage. She's more about the initiation, she's more about the 1-3-1. One, one. And finally, uh, SKT, and specifically Bang, has had the space to do what he can do at his best, and this has definitely been Bang rolling over Flash Wolves. Yeah, I mean, 8-0-5, uh, he's basically full item build now. Uh, do you think he'll, this is moving away from mid lane, but will he actually sell his boots or will he stick with that? Because with late game ADCs, you will see them swap out like boots, but is that the same for Ezreal? Uh, it's a little bit different. I mean, uh, yeah. it'll be interesting to see Pope Belda's take on this, but it's usually another zeal item, and 
you only you don't build zeal items, items yeah. on Ezreal. So is there a sixth item you could see selling CDR boots for the Ezreal on? Maybe a Guardian Angel or something? No, no way. I think the it gives you CDR and it gives you mobility. And so there's really no other um, item you can buy. I mean, people used to build Zephyr, but I'm pretty sure that that's not in the game anymore. <laughs> that's correct. <laughs> no more Zephyrs. <laughs> Still, if you yeah. go some sort of move speed item that gives you higher DPS, like if you go, say, Rapid Fire Cannon, then you're still moving so much more slowly than if you had Tier 2 boots, so players almost never do that. And at the end of the day, Ezreal's a hyper-carry mobility, I like to think him of. Hitting the 40% CDR, hitting your Mystic Shots, getting the E specifically. I mean, no other AD carry is the luxury of a gap closer that does damage on shot of such a low cooldown sure. that unless it's 60 minutes, I can't see him selling the CDR boots. Well, Faker gonna buy some time. Wolf gonna do the same, gonna be blocked out by Sword Art, but that was oh. enough time for SKT to take the Baron. And I think you nailed it, Pap Smithy. That's a lot of damage. And I was gonna get bumped over. Bang is gonna walk in the circle. Here comes the TP I'm from Faker, I believe. There he is. He's gonna be charged, but he is trapped there. It was able to chase after. Goodbye, NL. Still had the ultimate. Caster's gonna get chased down. Uh, SKT are just running all over Flash Wolves. Maple, <laughs> what, what can he do? Bang just does too much damage. And remember what this means. SKT about to confirm Cloud9's spot in the quarterfinals. And they fans rejoice. Exactly, I'm sure. And cheering for SKT is foreign for foreign fans, but this is definitely the time to do so because Cloud9 will be the only NA representative in the quarters. Want to hear those SKT chants in the uh, San Fran Arena right now. And they will close on the Nexus as well. And this was uh, generally a pretty clean game from them. I mean, like, after the laning phase, pretty slow. A couple ganks happening in the side lanes. And then SKT, yes, they lost that last Baron uh, before this one, but it's kind of closed it out. But it was so different from the last time these two teams met when it was very much Camp Faker win game, acquire ELO, I guess you could say. <laughs> very different game this time. Lissandra, much more of a defensive minded mid laner, but one that can start the 1 3 1. Fulfilled his role and. It didn't really feel like the mid lane changed much, but Faker we saw was on the roam, he was on the move, and he, he filled his role this game for Bang to carry. Yeah, pretty much he, he had all those crucial roams in the early game. Bang got a slight advantage, and that advantage grew bigger and bigger and bigger, and SKT is so good at doing this, and <laughs> wow, I mean, they, they just always have so much success, I feel, with this like Trundle, Ezreal, Lissandra kind of thing, because it's the kind of thing where you can kite back forever, and then when it's time to go, you just, you go. You claw in, and then you start running at them with Trundle, you put up put up the rock, and then they all die. Yeah, what do you think of Maple's performance in this game as well? Because he was ahead in terms of farm because of all the roaming that Faker did early game, but then was not really able to do anything after Pang was just massive and kept killing him. Yeah, uh, it's kind of unfortunate because you, to a certain extent, you have to just like stay in mid lane and be clearing the creeps, but uh, to to win on that side as Victor when Lissandra is roaming so much, I feel like you also have to when Lissandra has a successful play, and then you start to have lane pressure because Lissandra doesn't have ult, you also have to coordinate with your jungler and force a play as well. I think the, the real takeaway, though, is that it has to be winners and losers in competitive League of Legends. We can, I don't mean that in terms of match, but in terms of if someone's getting an advantage, someone else is losing out. Yeah. Bang and uh, Bang and the Victor had this. So it's Ezra and Victor who were really ahead, and Maple... There's only so much Victor can do, whereas Ezreal, if he has a massive lead, he has so much mobility that he can kind of take advantage of Victor. We saw them even 1v1, those two Fed members, and there was no answer to the Ezreal. And Ezreal warped the game a lot more because Lissandra made plays and Ezreal carried, whereas Victor, he's going to be second to places. He doesn't have Ghost. He still did a lot of damage, but in the end, because of the mobility, it just didn't seem to mean a lot. Yeah, was there any way for Flash Wars made to have stored a little with the Victor? Because you guys were talking about having them as a late game composition would have the slight edge over SKT, but clearly SKT just went barren and just like forced them to come out, right? I mean, before that, they had their AD carry instant kill the wave clear of the Victor. So that's what really seemed to speed up the game for me. So There's probably five minutes that was basically going to be extended to this game, if not for having Victor dead, taking inhibitor turret and closing the game. Yeah. To me, it was pretty bad when they lost the bot tier one turret so early with no response. Uh, that, so that set them like pretty far behind. But the nail in the coffin, kind of, I feel, was when Faker TP'd behind them again in that long lane, and then they ended up getting two kills. Yeah. I feel like from there, it's just like a slow snowball until your eventual death, because from there, SKT just had complete control of the game. That's pretty much what happened. Thank you very much, guys. That will do it from us today. So thank you very much for joining us, you guys at home as well. We'll be back next week for all new player experience streams as well as moves on to the quarterfinals in Chicago. However, now we'll be tossing it back to the analyst desk for a breakdown of this game and a wrap-up of the day. From myself and all the casters, guests, and production crew, thank you for watching.
flawlessly, but I don't know how many other teams can get away with playing this style of League of Legends. It requires so much coordination and requires you to win mid and top lane to be able to set up your 1 3 1. And the key thing with Lissandra is the only playmaker on their team, so it's completely reliant on Faker being able to make plays around the map. And while he was orchestrating so many of them, the setup initially from the Olaf and the Nami roaming together and finding the warding to make those plays much safer was immaculate. Yeah, it's just a mix together that you can only praise like almost every single player in this game from SKT, because you highlighted it's the support and jungle setting up the vision, and then it's Faker and Lissandra engaging the fights. I think Flash Wolves made a mistake in playing Victor against SKT, because I think the way they normally beat them and the way you should beat SKT, again, is by having a, a mid laner with more pushing power, more early game presence, because you need to stop Faker from going and impacting these sidelines. If he can go bot lane and give Bang two kills, SKT will always win. But let's have a look at why they were actually getting the side lane kills. It was because somehow a Caitlyn was being shoved under the turret repetitively, and Alan Sorda got completely outclassed in that bottom lane, just 2v2. They were real shaky. I do actually think the matchup is in favor of SKT, especially the first few levels with Israel in there. He's super, super strong when we look at the first three, four levels. And that gave them enough of an advantage to then push in the lane. And then one roam happens, and then you get the big advantage. And to be fair, both Bang and Wolf played phenomenally. I mean, Wolf's yes. uh, Nami was hitting bubble left and right. And when you're hitting even double bubbles at times, that's a, a lot of free harassment. You know, well, the through. bubble is a two-way street. I mean, the <laughs> NL was just having a super soaker week. He was week catching there. him. <laughs> he was just getting left, right, and the bubbles. He bought boots to try to dodge him and still couldn't dodge him. I, yeah, the, 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 the first the first by uh, Zerka Greaves is very questionable, but you speak about plays around the bot lane. Let's go ahead and take a look at our first replay. 17 and a half in, bot lane turret dive, two for zero for SKT. And I think this is the absolute strongest thing about SKT. If you don't put pressure around mid side, they can start setting up some place like this. There's obviously a double TP coming down, and then it's on Faker to engage perfectly, and he does it every single time. Three men snaring to his own ulti, that's on four members. Double bubble. And then it's very... Very easy to land the double bubble, but obviously credit to Wolf as well on that one. And this is how they just keep snowballing, and you can always rely on Faker to engage these fights perfectly. And that's why he can make Lissandra work, where almost no other mid laner at Wolves right now would be able to do that. And we always talk about when the Flash Wolves is Casa and Maple, and this time around it was actually Duke as well as uh, Bang that was able to cut Maple off. He didn't get the rotation down into that bottom lane, and they just didn't have the uh, damage to be able to follow up on the play. So, you know, heads up, play out of Faker to kick it all off. But in a sense, you know, zoning away that Victor, the one champion that was relatively in the game, was sure. probably what saved it. But again, Victor can never roam, you know, in the first place. And that's the problem. If Maple is just sitting alone in mid, he might be strong enough. But the rest of his team will lose around him, and he's not able to help them, and he has to be able to help them for Flash Wolves. But to, to be fair, I think that Flash Wolves really overplay their hand in both side lane plays from SKT. That bottom one, they got so overextended after not having a tier one. The double TP is up. You know that you can get easily flanked. Same with the top defend. That was just absolutely abysmal. And it's just a lack of respect for what SKT can do with a TP in the mid lane, which is not something that we see so often. And it's also another opportunity where they just didn't cut their losses. One more time, you know, two people should die here. You should give up a turret. Instead, they keep spending TPs. They go back in. And credit to SKT, because they're good enough to punish you for this every time. Love uh, the bubble here on MMD in the back and then he actually ends up having to flash over and he's now on the wrong side. And he's not able to join the fight. Not only should, you shouldn't even have lost two members here, in my opinion. As soon as you have zero control uh, mid in your own jungle and they start roaming, you gotta leave that tower. Don't even say and think, maybe we can hold it, maybe they're back away, because they won't. If you, if you play against a team who's so good at playing, you know, by the book, understanding, okay, now we can go dive top tower, that's our strong lane. You should always be able to respect and almost predict the play. I mean, 40,000 damage out of Bang. He was having such an amazing game. The second the SKT started executing the 1 3 1 with Bang in the mid lane, it was just disaster for Flash Wolves. Nobody could actually deal with him and Nami hitting pretty much every Mystic shot. And when you go with that Trinity Force build, that two item spike is going to be just the strongest DPS you can have at that time for an AD. And Crumbs, you pretty much just hit all the same, all the reasons that Bang is receiving player of the game. But of course, you know, part of what allowed him to do that was the play setup by Faker, and although Faker will not have had as impressive a scoreline, he definitely helped get Bang to that place where he can go 10-0-7 and do 44% of the team's damage. Are you kidding me? Yeah, that's insane, but once again, just want to repeat that 
going into best of five now. Teams need to start respecting the players on the map. The flash headbutt poles, the double TPs, cut your losses and just get the heck out of dodge because too many times in this group stage, we've seen teams gamble, overreach and get severely punished. Yeah, it's kind of been the story of this tournament so far. I feel some teams are very good at being proactive and actually making these plays like SKT and then too many teams are just way too slow at reading it. I can think to multiple European teams as well. Like someone recalls on the map, like a support recalls and they're like, all right, he will for sure go back to bottom lane. No, actually supports keep going to mid and then they can roam to the sides and they start forcing plays, support shows up and they get surprised and they die. And I talked to some of these players after, they're like, ah, yeah, we didn't expect him. Maybe he didn't come, maybe he did. You gotta respect that because it will happen. And I personally attribute that to just the communication. That's something that when you're seeing somebody off, off the map, you have to call them Mias and pretty much call out all the possibilities of what can happen. If somebody is off the map, you have to call out. They can go top, they can go middle, or they can TP down in this location. And as long as a team is able to look at each of those options and make sure that everybody understands the dangers around each one, these plays are going to be respected and the punishment is not going to be nearly as severe. And I, I want to save some of this quarterfinals discussion for a little bit after the group draw show, but now with the group stage completed. Let's take a look at the teams advancing to Chicago. Our top eight teams at Worlds 2016 are Albus, Knox, Luna, Rocks, Tigers, SK Telecom, T1, Cloud9, H2K, Edward Gaming, Samsung Galaxy, and Royal Never Give Up. So gentlemen, as we look at these eight teams, now I want to start talking about, you know, who's our front runners? Who are we looking for having great matchups? Or how are their, what are their roads to victory? I'm going to say Albus, Knox is the only team that does not have Koreans in them. That's what, is that? what do you mean by that? Korean, Korean players. players. Oh, does not have Korean players yes. on the team. Okay, great. Uh, I want you to have a look at it. Well <laughs> I want yes. well I'm looking All out right. for them. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, when you have a look at the groups, I mean, we've just said it time and time again. Korea has still won three first seeds. That's absolutely insane. And the scary thing is now, I mean, SKT, they look crisp. But Samsung Galaxy, they won two games in 24 minutes. Rox Tigers, yeah. they were the favorites coming in. Like, who the heck do you want to draw out of a pool one right now? Sure. H2K is the only one that looks like you could possibly fall as... And then actually H2K looked insanely good yep. when they got the 4-0 because they were so good in the early game, especially like if you can't match the laning phase against H2K, you will struggle against them. I think the cool thing is now looking at like all the groups and Uball, which was the strongest and weakest. There's a lot of talk, you know, some people say Group A was the weakest because like Albus made it out, but then C9, sorry, CLG and G2 underperformed big time. I think a lot of people look at a Group B with C9 now making it, but Flash was and I may had so many bad games as well. It's really hard to pick the one group because that can actually tell a little bit more of like which second seed will be strongest because all four second seeds have shown so many issues, so They've many shown weaknesses. Inconsistencies, yeah. right? Because even as you talked about with H2K, if they play like they did on their week two day, then they, right. are, they look as good as probably any of the other first seeds on their good day. But on their poor day, who knows what could happen, right? I'd be happy to draw them probably as a two seed for my best opportunity as a victory and coming out of the quarterfinals. Yeah, and the team that you're probably worried about the most as a two seed is probably RNG right now because they just look like a complete wild card. They look like they have good lanes and then they have bad lanes. They look like they can play macro. The next game, they look absolutely lost. Like no one can pin down like what is actually going on with RNG right now because honestly, they're just so inconsistent. Right, well, what about a, uh, EDG rather? Because as a two seed, again, I, I, you know, I, I don't know how many allowances we give a team where we say, look, we know we're, they're better than this. Look, we know they're better than this. Because the expectation was that they were going to be one of the strongest teams coming in. So well, you've seen some bright signs from this team. One, when everyone else was watching games, Mouse was still playing solo queue. And you also know that they're actually giving him a lot of support from the coaching staff. The big question is, like, is it going to be enough? Because history tells us, like, no, that is not enough. He's a bad player and he's going to be exploited. All right, well, it looks like they're ready on stage. So let's send it down to Riv and Jat for the quarterfinal draw. Thank you very much, gentlemen. And after an incredible two weeks of group stage matches, it is now time to find